<clears throat> so good afternoon i will be today presenting the concept of a fundamental of wave guides which is a part of a channel which is used as a channel when you transmit optical uh, information or optical signal from transmitter to the receiver uh, it is a very important crucial part of your uh, transmission line or channel of a optical communication system so a generic system of optical communication system can be seen here where you are encoding converting your electrical data which i am sending convert to a optical uh, domain and then this optical signals which carries your informations are carried by a channel which is made of a dielectric waveguide so this waveguide may have different architecture different design and which may serve different purposes and then again it will be received by a particular receiver which converts optical energy into electrical energy with the photo detector or other receiver circuits and again your information is retrieved back in electrical domain so this is a basic block how the optical communication system works so today in our this presentation i will be discussing about the role of communication channel how does it transfer your optical signal from one end to another end uh, basically if you see transmitter converts your electrical signal which is encoded here either through modulation process or any other process convert the optical energy electrical energy in optical energy and that optical energy is passing through a channel and then it is received so this channel may be either short range which is a part of integrated optical circuits where lot of optical signal conditioning are done so where what happen the this the channels are very small and their main is to to connect different optical systems in a optical circuits where this optical circuit may work as a phase converter beam splitter connector from one optical system to other optical systems as the integrated, integrated electrical circuits are there similarly integrated optical circuits are also there so if your channel is a very small and purpose is to convert connect two optical sub system for optical processing is known as short range optical wave guides typically these are either planar wave guides or rectangular wave guides so planar wave guide will be on a substrate you can deposit a uh, different materials and ensure such a way so that in between sandwich materials should be denser than the other surrounding materials so that total internal reflection may happen and light can be guided within the guided region so that will fulfill the requirement of a, a short wave planar wave guide this should be linear it should not change the the frequency or the information only it may attenuate because some energy will be absorbed or it should be delayed because of the material dispersion property this channel may be very long range where that is the heart of the communication system where the purpose is that signal should propagate to very long distance without any attenuation and we should also not distort your signal into frequency and phase so the channel should be a linear most of the time when we talk about the, the cross section the waveguide cross section if it is circular is known as is optical fibers <clears throat> sometimes circularity is not maintained then it goes to a non circular waveguide which are either uh, the polarizer mode dispersion, dispersion fiber some other fibers like this so now before we further proceed let me understand if i have a planar waveguide where the, this material is made of n1 and surrounded by n2 lower and upper materials are n2 which is such a way so that when any light goes from the denser region n1 to n2 light may go away from the normal so rays may go total internal reflection so for some, some simple understanding if this aperture through which the light is entering is very larger than the wavelength so if i say that is known as ray optics if the aperture this is the a value is small larger than the lambda lambda the wavelength of the light the ray optics can be applied what is ray optics means if rays are moving like this so always rays are thought as a perpendicular to the wave fronts so if waves are propagating multiple wave fronts are there between two wave fronts which are having same points which are oscillating in the same phase is known as wave front so these wave fronts correspond to the lambda if the aperture is very very larger than with uh, the lambda 
then multi large number of wave fronts can propagate without any distortion so always the wave front will not be too much distorted the normal to that will be approximately as the ray ray optics will valid so when the apertures are very larger than the lambda the ray optics will happen and then i can apply a snell's law here and then find that what is the angle so that this angle which light has falling through the axis within the angle should be accepted so for example if you are passing a light here which is angle like this alpha m because it is air material it will go away from the normal so this will bend towards the normal so theta will be there it will come to the interface of inner n1 and n2 which is core region and cladding region and then again this ray will go away from the normal here so when it goes to 90 degree so this all ray coming over here will be either the surface or total internal reflection i must know the condition theta m for which the this critical angle is 90 degree or total internal reflection will happen so the total internal reflection to happen at this interface theta m will decide and this is distributed with alpha m suppose if i say what the maximum alpha m which will give you this theta maximum so that which is correspond to phi c so that light within this angle should be guided any light out of this will not fulfill this kind of suppose light is outside this this will collide here and this angle is smaller than this so the if you smaller than this then it will not be 90 degree it will go away so all the ray which are out here will go out so so that light should be guided here to turn the reflection if light are within the angle here so alpha m is the light acceptance angle which is very critical for this in the ray condition ray optics condition so we can apply a snell's law here so alpha m or sin alpha m sin is very alpha is very very small can approximate as alpha m will be n1 of sin theta m and sin theta m will be suppose phi c i know then it is a theta m will be 90 degree minus phi c so sin theta m will be written as cos of phi c here and sin phi c is n2 by n1 snell's law here so cos phi c will be n1 square minus n2 square square root upon n1 and n1 n1 get cancelled so alpha m comes out with this so this is known as numerical aperture so if i know n1 n2 i can tell how much angle the light can be accepted so this gives you how much light can be taken by the fiber if i know sin phi c similarly sin theta m can be also found sin cos theta m sorry cos theta m will be sin of phi c and this will be nothing but n2 by n1 so but suppose this aperture is not very large compared to lambda then then what about lambda and a lambda means wave front will not pass properly from here then wave front will be distorted so the normal to that ray will also be distorted so ray will not be taken care of the ray approximation is not valid then we can go to wave optics when the aperture this a is of the order of the lambda then wave optics is applied and wave optics is nothing but i can say then my rays are not there their wave fronts are there and the wave front electric and magnetic vectors are oscillating and when they go here wave fronts will distorted when they are distorted the secondary source will come and again so then i can say that if this is a wave front here normal to wave front there is a k vector k vector will give you wave vector so omega by k or this will give you the phase velocity and d omega dk will give you group velocity so wave optics can be applied so to make intuition we can think very simple way if suppose the, the wave which are moving here is just perpendicular to the cross section the k will be now if wave front is like this wave front is like this the k will be parallel to this k will parallel to this k will not collide with any surface here so that is a k maximum so i can say which if k is any random direction with theta here the k can be modeled as one parallel component one perpendicular component the k parallel component will give you k of k1 suppose it is a medium n1 here k will be wave vector will be k1 so k1 will be equal to n1 so it will k0 n1 k0 is equal to 2 pi by lambda 0 so i can say beta longitudinal component will be k1 and theta will be 0 so maximum beta will be k0 uh, the k1 cos 0 means k1 so k parallel which is beta is maximum value of beta which is a k0 n1 so maximum beta longitudinal component will be when k is parallel to this axis or wavefront is perpendicular 
but when the the ray is not the ray is only along the axis but suppose the wave ray rotates like this the wave fronts rotate like this the wave fronts rotates like this the k will be like this how much maximum angle it can take ray ray can theta m maximum so this also can take maximum theta m if it is maximum theta m then how much the k per projection will come the k maximum this angle k projection will minimum so k cos theta k cos k one cos theta m maximum theta m will be there after that total internal reflection condition will not fulfill so i can say now cos theta m will be maximum this value this condition so i know k1 cos n1 k0 n1 cos theta m maximum will be beta minimum so longitudinal component will be minimum when this takes a theta m maximum value and cos theta m is equal to nothing but n2 by n1 so cos theta m sin phi c sin phi c like this so if i write n2 by n1 n1 get cancelled so beta minimum will be k0 n2 so i can say now when it is a most oblique ray the longitudinal component will reduce to k0 n2 so all the rays all the beta which are lower than k0 n1 and greater than k0 n2 will propagate so i can find that all the rays which are in this range of the theta m which are which are in this will be in, within this range will be total internal reflection similarly all the wave vectors whose k or whose longitudinal component beta is lower than k0 n are equal to k0 n means parallel to that and when it rotates k0 n2 will be after that it will go beyond the critical angle and it will not propagate so beta between this range is the range of propagation of the beta if beta is equal to this then it is going to critical angle and after that it will not propagate now we can find so this is the way simple way we can understand why the correlation of ray optics to wave optics but actual solution is you have to solve the equations so suppose if i want that field should propagate into this region so field should be oscillatory and field should not propagate here because it is now even send mode so all the ray which will be guiding here will feel if i write field equation will be oscillatory it will propagate to a long distance sign or cross functions oscillatory functions and if here in the field here and model here field in this region outside this region will be decaying so that is the way how electromagnetics can be solved so now if i say so if your longitudinal component beta the k is there longitudinal component beta will give you propagation behavior but k perpendicular so i can say any random k will have k parallel will give you beta propagation behavior and k perpendicular k perpendicular will give you how the field is varying in this direction so when k perpendicular value i know then k perpendicular at this point will some other value here some other value here some other value for example suppose in this it is moving here because of reflection there is stationary field pattern here if these are two nodes are there the minimum points here minimum points here and first distribution will be maxima here the so one distribution will be like this so if i say one lambda by two like this then i can have one lambda by two zero then lambda by two so if i fields are varying here along this plane is mode distribution so the mode distribution behavior can be found if i know the k perpendicular value here how much k perpendicular if i know this is k1 in the medium of n1 k actually it is k0 n but in this medium will be k0 n1 so k0 n1 so this is k0 square n1 square minus beta square will be this square so this value k perpendicular will be k0 square n1 square minus beta square square root so this will be k perpendicular so i can write now the k perpendicular is the u parameter of the core which will give you behavior about field distribution is written as k0 square n1 square minus beta square square root of that so now this is there so if i want field should be oscillatory in this region then i can simple solution can be written as a1 exponential of i u r r is distance r is this radial distance so r is equal to zero here one two three value r increases in this direction r increases in this direction so i can say now psi1 in the core can be written a dash e exponential of i u r and if u for oscillatory it should be real so u is nothing but k perpendicular is k0 square n1 square minus beta square so it has to be real means the beta has to be lower than that 
So beta is lower than this, beta is lower than this. This is the same condition which I found from this interpretation of the wave array of interpretation. Meaning that if I want fields to be propagating in the core region, this should be one proper, proper, proper solution. And now fields should be decaying here, fields should be decaying here, then it should be modeled as exponential minus wr. So now it should not be oscillated, it should be real. So if then I define the k perpendicular in this region, should be real number, then I can define this value beta square like this. And now to make it real, this value should be greater than this. So always beta should be great. So what happened? Beta should be greater. Beta should be greater than k0 n2 so that it is a real real number decay. Now suppose it becomes smaller. Suppose you get a condition of beta should also be lower than this or equal to beta is lower than this. Beta is lower than this. This becomes imaginary or not? W become imaginary. W become imaginary. Mean that field will also oscillatory here. Field will also here oscillatory, here oscillatory. Means no guidance. Throughout field will go. I want field should propagate here. It should not propagate here. So for a guiding region, you must know that beta has to be greater than this, but smaller than this. So beta has to be greater than this, smaller than this. Same. So beta must be greater than K0N2, but lower than K0N1. Same interpretation range. Same range which I have discussed. Same range which I have discussed here. So now, with the field distribution point of view, if you can write the solutions in the core region, guiding region, then U has to be positive. For a cladding decaying function, W has to be negative, and same condition will come. Now suppose if I want field should no more be decaying here. Field will no more be decaying here means beta becomes now K0. So beta has to be lower like this, but because of the angle variation, suppose when you go on angle the variation, it may happen the critical angle condition so that beta projection is equal to K0 and 2. After that, it will become cut off. It will go out of the cladding. You can understand like this. When soon beta becomes k0 n2, w becomes this k0 n2, w become 0. w becomes 0 means this become 1, means psi 2. Field into the cladding become constant. So now when the beta is equal to k0 n2, critical con angle condition in a ray optics is corresponding to your field here no more be decaying field become constant so that is a cutoff condition means after that that beta beyond that beta solution will not be possible so the solution to possible to propagate here for a propagation condition in a waveguide the beta has to be greater than beta has to be lower than k0 and 2 so beta has to be lower than lower than k uh, lower than k0 n1 and greater than k0 n2 as soon as beta tends to k0 n2 beta becomes k0 n2 w becomes zero field become constant field will no more be guiding it becomes a cutoff condition so now whenever you find a solution and you find a condition then in the condition the cladding parameter w if you make is equal to zero field will become cut off means that will not propagate the solution is not possible so for a possible solution you must see that beta must be within k0 n2 and k0 n1 however if you want that all beta within that will all continuous beta will not possible because when any particular beta one for a given value of n1 n2 for a given frequency one angle corresponding angle beta one will go the beta will, this, this will reflect in here, it will be reflected here, it will be reflected here. So when I say the ray is going here, because of the lateral confinement, one field pattern will happen. This field pattern has to maintain and propagate throughout the waveguide. It will only happen that after one period reflection, the point one reflection here, another reflection here, between this point and this point, it should be only integral multiple of half, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, so that the wave's nature, the mode nature, if it is a minima, minima here, throughout minima, minima should be there. It should not go on changing. So minima here, again minima here, throughout the mode should be same. So after each reflection should maintain. So for a given aperture A, mean 2A, for a given N1, N2, phase condition is decided. So that will only satisfy to some of the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 solutions. So out within the, this range beta, all beta is not possible. Only few beta 
which are possible which satisfied the two pi are phase condition of the modes after reflection multiple reflection throughout the waveguide so that we can have a solution so either you solve the maxwell equation with the boundary condition and see that which under the boundary condition when that phase matching conditions are fulfilled only those beta will be possible so what i want to say that if you want to understand about total behavior of the waveguide you must solve the eigen value equation satisfying the maxwell the, the boundary conditions then you'll find possible beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 of course within the range then you can find which modes which beta is possible and as soon as far any beta when it correspond to k0 and 2 that beta will cease to propagate that become a cut off conditions so that will be our approach to understand about the wave guide behavior of the structure now so meaning that for any beta for any particular n1 and 2a you must have to solve the equations and find the beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 value for multiple modes which are propagating before going to that let me also understand about so this all u this is function of beta so beta 1 u1 beta 2 u2 beta 3 u3 so multiple beta will give you different u and different solutions now if you want to take for a given wave guide which will satisfy this also and other conditions of the wave guide so we'll define a normalized v parameter which is nothing but u square so i will find a normalized value here which is u is a 1 upon lambda 1 upon length dimension so i want to get a number so when i multiply u by a a is the half either this radius of the if it is a fiber half of this a or this is total 2a so if i multiply by small u for k perpendicular parameter with the a that is capital u it is core parameter it is a number similarly w will be again a number and now u square plus w square if i do that is a v square so v square if i do here then u square plus w square if you add u square plus w square here what happen beta beta get cancelled you get only k0 square and one square minus k0 square into square and then if you take square root of this the v so v can be written as u square plus w square simply if you write these two values you will get a value like this 2 pi a upon lambda and one square minus into square this n1 square mass n2 square will go here k0 will come out k0 is nothing but 2 pi by lambda 0 a so for any given lambda you find a v value which is a function of only n1 core index cladding index radius or half of the width of the wave guide so this is the wave guide parameters and this is your signal which you want to pass light you have to pass so for a given lambda for a given radius for a given n1 n2 you can find the v number the moment you know the v number this v number has to be satisfied here as well as this boundary solutions also there and you can solve that which beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 are possible into a particular wave guide so that we will discuss now let me talk about a simple optical channels which is optical fiber so optical fiber essentially is a just like a wave guide which is a cylindrical cross section so there is a in inner region optical fiber is a glass cylinder which is surrounded by another lower refractive index is a glass cylinder this is known as cladding and to protect that there is a plastic jacket that is a coating if i see the cross section of this inner region is a core outer region is a cladding these are glass and these are supporting as a material here so this is a simple structure of a optical fiber so most of the optical fiber the cross section is a circular but sometime because of pressure it should be non circular that is known as elliptical cross section or something so those are those are specially designed that become there that that uh, the field become sub asymmetrical that i will not discuss about you so now let me talk about cross section so this is one of the fiber here so i have this fiber this is uh, so if the diameter of the fiber is very very small 8 to 12 micron and uh, this is the n2 here so core region will be n1 cladding region is n2 diameter is 2a so radius will be a if this is 8 to 12 micron the more only single ray will propagate of course for this dimension you have to write the maxwell equation solve the field equation to find the solutions 
So that is no way to see a ray, but you can approximate that only one ray is there. So multi rays are not propagating. So delay will be very, very small. However, if I increase the aperture here, this aperture is nearly 50 micron to 100 micron. Of course, this will be 200, 300 micron. So the ray which are moving here, because this is 50 micron more than the lambda, so it can apply the ray optics. So in multi-mode fiber, these are multi-mode step in the fiber, multi-ray can be propagated and the ray approximation is possible. But here also, if you see, the ray which are moving along the axis will reach very quickly. The ray which are oblique angle satisfied by the alpha m, theta m and phi c will reach after some time. So the, all the energy which are moving here will be propagating either through axial ray or through this ray and they will reaching at different time intervals. The pulse which I'm launched here will be now delayed here. If delay is very larger, one if I'm giving a repeated pulses here, so one pulse may cross to the time interval to reach to the other pulse, pulse time interval and they will merge together and that creates a confusion. So that we don't want. So this is known as the dispersion. So multi-ray dispersion will be possible in multi-mode way. Similarly, because the, if I change the refractive index of this in a graded fashion, at the axis I have a maximum refractive index, but when I go away from the axis, refractive index decreases. So axial ray which are moving to the shortest path, but their refractive index is larger, so there will be slow down. But the ray which are moving away from the axis, they will have to travel longer, longer path. But because refractive index is lower in those region, lower the refractive index, higher the speed. So the shortest path will take some time. But longest path will be speeded up. So if they are speeded up such a way so that they are reaching here at the same time as the lower, the axial rays are reaching here. So time delay between rays reaching here will be reduced into the gradient index fiber. So gradient index fiber gives you lower time dispersion as compared to this because they, because the grading is done, the refractive index of the core region is varied in such a way so that the the rays which takes the shorter path is a denser rays which are away from the shorter path is rarer rarer the medium faster the speed they reach quick at the same time and you can manage the time delay and that is more beneficial so this is a simple cross section you are sending 1010 pulses to this they will reach here and because of in a pulse you have multiple wavelength they are moving different way so they will be time delayed so this i can explain like so this is a simple cross section, a multi-mode fiber. The aperture is very, very large. Single fiber aperture is very, very small. Aperture means A, N1, N2. You will define a V parameter, already V parameter ability decided, which is decide, de designed by A, radius of the fiber, N N1 square minus N2 square, numerical aperture, wavelength which I'm using. You will see that for a single mode condition, this value, we normalized frequency should be equal to 2.4. We'll discuss about it. So now, <clears throat> suppose I am sending multiple pulses here. Multiple pulses here, they are propagating through the fiber here. So they are now a different, different time. So now if they are multi-ray, multi-mode fibers, the some pulse will reach very quickly. Some portion of pulse will take longer time. So the whole pulse delay will be now delayed here. They are delayed such a way so that this time and this time delay is more than the rest time delay here. These two pulses merges together. So if I say that time, the stretch time is delayed by delta t, how much delay is function of how much path difference is there? So in a multi-mode fiber, multi-mode fiber, multi-path are maximum delay region. So delta t delay at multi-path is nearly calculated as n1 upon n2 delta n upon c. Larger the delta and difference you talk about, larger the n1 and 2 difference you talk about, the more the delay you will have. So now you can, so you can find that delta t by L. Yes, excuse me. Okay. 
so now we know that so the delay here is a function of suppose if i change larger n1 and 2 so larger delay will come over here so this can be proved like this so typically for a step and a fiber multimode fiber n1 and 2 are same order delta n is 0 0.001 3 into 10 power 8 so if i talk about this is in kilometer typical value comes out to be microsecond per kilometer means that if i pass these pulses to one kilometer of this particular multi-mode fibers then one microsecond delay is coming over here so now if i am repeating the pulse after one microsecond one pulse will be delayed by one microsecond so now that will now go on merging pulse will go on merging so you cannot send a pulse up to one microsecond delay so ultimately the bit rate is how much pulse you can send per second depends upon how much delay you're talking about so more the delay more the delay more possibility of merging so the bit rate will be smaller the bit rate is you know see proportion one upon delta t if you want larger data rate larger bits to should be sent in one second then delta t delay should be very very small delay is very very small means if you go on reducing the radius here then this path delay will be lesser here then they will have very low delay so delay will be very very low so bit rate can be improved by increasing decreasing the delta t so either reduce this dimension you go on reducing dimension such a way so that if this becomes of the order of lambda that is case of single mode condition then this multi rays will not be possible then you can have only one particular ray of course for a single mode we cannot say ray optics because then wave optics has to be solved but for understanding that if only one axial ray is left here then there is no multi path delay so i can say in a single mode condition only one axial ray is there then multi path delay is not there the typical value multi path delay is microsecond per kilometer so that is not possible so that is so single mode will be faster there will not be any delay of microsecond delay of course but when i am talking about i am exciting the pulse with the source this i will always use a light emitting diode as a laser source so this one zero for this time light is on no light light is on no light so when light is on light is taken by the source source will have a one wavelength lambda zero and source will also have a line width of the source you cannot have a source whose line width is zero typically for a light emitting diode delta lambda is 30 nanometer and optical communication this is 13 30 nanometer lambda zero or 15 50 nanometer so 20 30 nanometer is there so that's why light emitting diode doesn't have very good behavior but if i have very narrow source ild injection laser they are two nanometer even less than that very high quality sources are there dfd lasers they are very very small but uh, so now i so this is the lambda which is just like is in wavelength domain i can convert this wavelength domain always in frequency domain you know lambda so c upon lambda will be frequency 2 pi c upon lambda will be omega zero so always either think for a source into the lambda domain or think for a source into the frequency domain so lambda zero correspond to omega zero and then delta lambda correspond to delta omega. So now either I talk about lambda zero or lambda m. If I am sending this pulse, which is made of a source where multiple lambdas are there or multiple frequencies are there. If multiple lambdas are there, even there is no multi path delay. There is no multi path delay, but the signal which is carried by this through a medium, which is made of silicon, silica fibers. So material is a dispersive material, you know, any material refractive index is a function of lambda and if you have multiple lambdas here so all lambdas will move different speeds if they are different speeds that is known as material dispersion because of material dispersion the all the pulse energy of different lambda will move at a different speed they will also reach a different time so even there is also a delta t time here which is a function of delta lambda of the source the larger the delta lambda larger the delta t so delay of the pulse will also function of delta lambda of the source. Even I allow that to propagate to a longer distance of the fiber, again more delay will come. So I can say the delay into the pulse is a function of delta lambda, function of L, and also a property of the material. That is property of the material is dm, material dispersion. So delta T is written as delta dm, delta L, L. Typical value I can say most of the dm value is 2 picosecond per kilometer. 2 picosecond per kilometer per nanometer and suppose i have 5 picos 5 nanometer is the delta lambda so how much for one kilometer i can have one kilometer length 
So 5 into 2, 10. So I can have 10 picosecond. The typical value delta T comes out with 10 picosecond for a material dispersion into the way. If I have delta lambda 1 nanometer or 2 nanometer, that is ILD, 1 nanometer or 2 nanometer, then I can have very small value because 5 picosecond it comes with 10, 2 value I'm talking about 2 and 5, 10. Suppose I have 1, pic, one nanometer, 1 nanometer, it will be only 2 picosecond. So if, if I'm taking a lower delta lambda, I can have very small delta t, meaning that data rate to the fiber also is a function of source behavior. If you're taking a high quality source, very good. But high quality source, very high cost. Then if I have the DM is 2 picosecond per second, I can have a fiber whose DM is 1 picosecond. Even DM is 0.1 picosecond. But that is again a very challenging task to increase the cost of the fiber. So this is one way. Another way, either if I look into this domain or omega zero domain, so I want to say delta delta lambda will correspond to delta omega also. So multiple omega will move different speeds. If delta multiple omega with different speeds, the larger delta omega, larger delta t, larger l, larger delta t. And again, corresponding to that in frequency domain, another parameter is the beta two, that is a GVD parameter. So delta t into the fiber is a function of Beta 2, which is a behavior of the waveguide, delta omega is the source behavior and length of the fiber here. And beta 2, GVD parameter, is a function of delta n, n1, n2 behavior, radius of the fiber, and all. So these all are material and waveguide dispersion, which I have discussed about, is there. So now what I want to say, if I want how much delta t is there, unless I know how my this lambda is affecting the, my waveguide, delta n is affecting this all, will be a function. Now, electromagnetic wave propagation into the such fiber or materials as written as solution can be written as a peak value model value which are moving here exponential minus i omega t minus beta z. Beta is the longitudinal component which will give you which you have to solve the, this wave equation to find the value of the beta. So now beta is a function of omega and so in effect you know, n, n omega by c. But if you are passing through material not only one omega zero. There is multiple omega because the signal which you are sending here will be modulated and line with the source will also be there. If I assume that large number of omegas are there in omega zero plus capital omega, which is larger number of frequencies are there, which are because of the modulation with the pulse are moving here in the fiber. So I can say now beta will be function of omega plus delta omega. I can say this omega will be equal to omega plus capital omega. Capital omega is the omega spread of this. So I can say now if I apply the Taylor expansion, so beta omega will be expanded as omega zero plus omega can be written as beta zero plus d beta by d omega omega plus d square beta upon d omega square plus second derivative, third derivative. So Taylor expansion if you do, so first will be beta zero. This is the longitudinal component of omega zero corresponding because when you are modulating signal sending to the fiber, you have multiple omegas. So because of larger omega, you also have multiple frequencies. Because of the multiple frequencies, you will have different delta omega. If you're changing delta omega, delta beta will change. So delta omega by delta beta will be group velocity. Second derivative will give you dispersion behavior. So if I expand the beta value here, I get a group velocity. I get a GVD parameter, how pulse will spread like this. So this can be found by this value. This can be found by this group velocity and other third harmonic and other the third order dispersion, higher order dispersion can also be done. So ultimately, in the waveguide, you must know what is the exact value of beta, and then you can find how pulse are propagating, how much delay is there, how much delay is there, how much bit rate you can have. So your aim is from this, you have to send very high data rate. Unless you know beta value exactly, another group velocity, other informations, you are phase velocity. You cannot estimate the time. You cannot estimate the time, data rate. Another utility of high speed communication fiber is not very well understood. So now we understood that the property of the waveguide are beta, omega, longitudinal component, are normalized frequency. These are very important to understand that. So now to understand that, I will tell about how the electronic wave are propagating through this medium. So now suppose if you want the light is an electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic wave in free space 
is transverse electromagnetic wave where electric and magnetic vectors are in one plane perpendicular to the energy propagation. So if I have this is E, this is H, then this will be E cross S is the pointing vector. Energy will propagate throughout in a free space. But when you confine this, suppose you put a plane here, so electric vector will be reflected here. So when any wave is moving here, you can find it in one plane, that is a planar wave guide. If you confine the one plane here, so because of reflection, electric field here, so there will be minima, minima here, some maxima. So in the per 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 perpendicular plane of the propagation, there is a stationary field pattern. So that will give you the mode here. So I must find what is the solution under a boundary condition so that the full distribution will give you different modes. How many uh, repetitions are one lambda by two, the fundamental mode, two lambda by two, second mode, third mode like this. So if you see the four Maxwell equations in a free space in a dielectric waveguide where there is no charge, there is no conductivity, then curl of E can be written minus deva B by deva T, the magnetic induction, electric field, it is a displacement vector, it is a magnetic field. So now uh, the, I, then the all four equations I can find. So if I write curl of this operation, so curl of curl of E, is equal to minus curl of deva V by deva T. This deva operator I write here, this will be curl of B, and you know B will be mu into H. So curl of H here, mu will come out here. So this can be written like this, and curl of H is nothing but deva D by deva T. So I write deva W deva T here, epsilon will come over here. So now it comes out to be deva square. So this deva square D upon this. So this comes out to be deva square here. And now curl of curl of E can be written as here grade of divergence of E minus del square del operator like this. And now in a free space, I know del of here, there is no charge here. It is epsilon E, the del of E is equal to zero. So del of E is equal to zero. So minus del square E, so minus del square E. So this will be minus del square E minus this will be zero. So this equation can be written as like this. So this is electric vector you can find magnetic vector you can find and then I know epsilon mu one upon epsilon mu is a, the this velocity phase velocity of wave into the medium so if it is a free space it will be epsilon zero mu zero if it is a medium it will be one upon mu epsilon it is a medium like here so if isotropic medium if the whole uniform medium is there the wave equation can be written like this and its solution is simple I psi zero exposure minus omega t minus beta z so omega by beta, phase velocity, d omega by d beta, group velocity, second derivative will give you GVD parameter, third. So I know that beta is not, beta is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3 as I told you tell expansion. So if I want to solve here, all other equations we can find here. Now suppose this medium is not in homogeneous medium. The in homogeneous medium that is a property of a waveguide. So in the core region is N1, N2, N2 are there. Then I can write the same equation divergence of D will be E, D will be epsilon E, epsilon, epsilon 0, epsilon R. So it is a free space permit, uh, permittivity and it is a epsilon R permittivity number here. So now because of N1 and N2 is changing, so X and Y direction talk about permittivity change. So I cannot take out of this. So I can now write this equation can be written as epsilon 0, del of epsilon R, E plus epsilon r del of divergence of e is equal to zero because here there is no charge is equal to zero. So from here I can find del e divergence of e can be written as minus this, this zero here. So minus one upon epsilon r del of epsilon r e. So if I know how electric vector is changing here, so del of e cannot be written here zero when it is in homogeneous medium. So now your equation, the earlier equation curl of curl of e, this I have written 